friends, it is Sunday, December 6th, the second Sunday in Advent. Um, also today, we will be celebrating communion with Pastor Paul. So at some point, if you aren't ready, get your bread, your juice, water, whatever it is you're using, um, so that we can celebrate communion together. Um, today, um, I want to thank the Midgley family who will be lighting the Advent candles um, for participating today. It's great to see our families um, as we go this during this time um, lighting the candles. Um, our announcements this week, um, the prayer team is still meeting Tuesday at 630 and they have been praying so hard for us and for everyone and so um, our thanks to them, what a blessing it is to have them meet every Tuesday. Um, pledges and offerings, I know you're still sending them in, um, but this week you should have got in the mail uh, a pledge card with a note from Pastor Paul. Um, we will be doing um, our pledge cards for next year, so please prayerfully consider um, what you can do. Um, I do want to say I know some people get nervous if I put it down, I'm tied to it, do what you can. And if some weeks you can't, and some weeks you can do more, that's great. But we'd like to send in the pledge cards and next Sunday, the 13th, um, Pastor Paul will be blessing those cards. So please send them in. And if you get them in after that date, it's okay. We'll still be blessing them. And we'll still be taking them, but please prayerfully consider um, what you can give um, for next year. Uh, next week, next Saturday, which is December 12th, um, will be the last day we'll be collecting for the Bailey Center and Learning Works um, before the holidays. And then we'll probably, uh, we'll resume right after the first of the year. But I do want to say that <clears throat> it's making a big difference. Last week, Debbie took the most we've ever taken over there. They have been averaging between 700 people and up to 900 people one week. So the need in our neighborhood is great. And so please, if you can come this, this week, um, let's try to fill up Debbie's car. So maybe we have to take two cars. So um, that would be so great. And they really appreciate it. Um, also, the Learning Works is struggling right now. They're still trying to um, get funds um, for the for the youth, uh, the students, to be able to um, get on the internet and study with each other and see each other. So maybe this week you want to give a couple dollars, five dollars, whatever it is you can give. Um, put an envelope and we'll, we'll have a place for you to leave it during the Bailey Center Day. Also, if you'd like to make another, a donation and write a check and you call Connie Horton, she will tell you um, the address and how to do that. Uh, also, we have Advent calendars left, um, and so if you haven't picked yours up, you can come on the 12th also and get them. Or if you want to let Debbie or I know, we can arrange for you to pick them up during the week in the office or something else so that um, everybody gets one. Um, this Sunday will be the first Sunday for the Advent study group um, at 1 o'clock. If you still are interested, you can still join. You don't have to be here the first week, but you need to let Linda Neat or Pastor Paul know um, that, that they can get a book. You can also get it on your Nook or um, your other devices, and you can do it that way if you'd like. Uh, youth group, we're gonna have a holiday um, Zoom get together uh, next uh, Sunday, which is the 13th at three o'clock, and I'll be sending out an email about that. And last, I know some of you have been asking about this, but we are going to be having a Christmas Eve service with candles and silent night, um, what we're used to. It will be online. Um, we just can't meet in person or with what's been going on. We, we want to be safe. But more details will follow, but I just want you to know that there will be a, a service on Christmas Eve, and we're working on that. So... Um, as this week has been a little difficult, is closing more things down. Um, they can't close down the church. They can't close down the birth of Christ. So we are going to go into this season with joy, with hope, with love, and with peace. And be safe this week. And I'll see you soon.
God. for God's arrival. Make the road smooth and straight. In the Old Testament book of Malachi, preparing for the Lord meant ensuring that everyone was ready. In order to receive the Christ, we are called to purify our hearts from their hardened edges. Like a refiner's fire, God can reshape our hearts, widening the way for Christ to enter in. Let us pray. From the 51st Psalm, we are reminded to ask, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Amen. 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 Sunday, December 6th, you see my compost pile behind me this week, uh, and I'm seeing that as a reminder of Advent, as uh, it is full of things pruned and weeded, things that died in the last year, uh, resting in stillness, in darkness, getting ready to receive new life. So uh, for those of us in Advent this year, we remind ourselves it's not simple for everyone. Many of us are remembering losses, whether they're very recent or in the past, whether they happened at this time um, of the year or another time um, they're close to us close in our hearts and our minds so we are thinking of Norma and Marv and Kathy Judy and Susan Menke Debbie the Snows Wayne and Barb and Connie and I know I've left some names out but uh, those come to me as people who have had some big losses in the last 10 years. We also uh, observed World AIDS Day this year and remember um, back 20, 30 years ago that um, there are major losses to that. And now here we are in another, a different kind of pandemic. Um, so we're losing more and more and more to process, more to uh, 
um, make way for new life. Help us process this grief, please, God, and um, through this Advent, prepare us for the new life that is coming. Remind us as there's all this holiday spirit that it's not all sweetness and brightness for everyone. It is complex. There's grief running through it. Help us to embrace all of it to make us whole. Wholeness uh, in you, God. And there are those among us now who need healing. Connie has a friend, Carol, who's been diagnosed with thyroid cancer. So prayers for her, uh, for the Garrett's friend, son-in-law, Ron. Uh, we pray for those with difficulty uh, breathing or allergies. The fires in California just, um, it's, a, it's a double whammy. All all the unhealthy air and then the sensitivity to lungs with COVID and flu. So uh, keep us breathing, help us take care of the air we breathe. So we pray for Terry Lynn, um, for Josephina who's had allergies, for my brother Richard. Um, and we pray for those we know who have those close to them with Alzheimer's. Uh, give them strength and love to see through that mysterious, uh, mysterious separation from, from the present. Help the caregivers be present and know your presence, please God. Uh, we still have uh, many veterans in our midst from endless wars, God, um, remind us of their needs. Um, keep us caring for their injuries to their bodies and their souls. And God, um, in the coming week, prepare us to receive the love you are about to shower us with. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. now be in an attitude of prayer and silent meditation. God, on this second Sunday of Advent, we have heard your servant crying out to us in the wilderness. We have heard that you are ushering in a reign of peace, and we want to see your kingdom when it comes. 
On this day, we pray for the nations to know your truth and your light. We pray for the poor, the hungry, and the needy. We pray for those who are spiritually hungry and poor in spirit. May they come to know the living water and to drink deeply from your well. We pray for those who face Christmas alone or who are sick or homeless or destitute. Jesus Christ, light from true light, be a light in our darkness. O oh God, the hour of your coming again draws near and make us ready in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls. This we pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our gospel lesson for the morning comes to us from the third chapter of Matthew, verses 1 through 12. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him in all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warn you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The word of God for the people of God.
and strife shall cease upon the highway of the Prince of Peace. The story is told of a little boy and a church Christmas program who had only one line to remember. He was playing an angel of the Lord, and his line was, Behold, I bring you good tidings. Well, after the rehearsal, he asked his mother what tidings meant, and she told him that it meant news. When the program was presented, the boy got a case of stage fright and couldn't remember his line. Then all of a sudden the idea came to him and he shouted out, Hey, wow, have I got news for you. You know, in a sense, that is exactly what John the Baptist is saying in this passage from the Gospel of Matthew. It is an announcement of good news. Here John is announcing not only the coming of the long-awaited Messiah, but the very presence of the Messiah in our midst. John tells us that it is time to prepare. That is the role of John in the Christmas story, for that is what Advent is all about, preparation preparing our hearts and homes for Christmas and the celebration of the birth of our Savior. Everybody knows you can't have or do anything without some preparation. So what John is saying to us is simply, salvation is at hand and all the flesh shall see the salvation of God. So prepare the way of the Lord. You know, through those words and through John's call for repentance, John reminds us that we can't redeem ourselves on our own. No matter what we say or do, we can't produce our own salvation. And because of that, that is why God sent God's child into the world. The incarnation of God means that God is now made flesh. And the birth of Christ is that God is now with us. I know that some people have trouble with the whole idea of the incarnation of God becoming human. It's not that they don't understand it. It is difficult to accept a God who would truly become human and die for their sins or their brokenness. But that is what the good news of the season is, that God humbled God's self and came to be born in a stable in the tiny town of Bethlehem in order to show us God's love, God's purpose, and God's grace. Furthermore, it is sometimes difficult for us to understand we who expect perfection out of everything, our children, our church, even ourselves, that if we are less than perfect, that God won't accept us. But that is another part of the good news. We don't have to be perfect. God chose to be like us. And by becoming one of us, we are lifted up, raised up, making it possible 
for us to become yoked with Christ. That is why Christ came. That is why Christ was born in Bethlehem. That is why Christ suffered and died to show us just how much God does love us. And that is the invitation to give our lives to God and to let God love us. That is always the invitation. And that is very good. No, it is great news. In the words of the little boy at the Christmas program, wow, have I got news for you. And through this time of preparing ourselves to receive the Christ at Christmas, we will discover just how much God loves us as we celebrate the joy and the mystery of this Advent season. Amen. As we are now preparing to, to consecrate the elements and to receive Holy Communion, I invite you to begin to prepare your elements of the bread and the cup. Before you, as I will then now share these words of consecration. Let us remember that after Jesus had partaken of the Passover meal with his disciples, he took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat in memory of my body broken for you. Likewise, he took the cup, and after giving thanks to God, he gave it to his disciples to drink, saying, Drink this in memory of my blood shed for you. And may these elements of the bread and cup nourish your bodies and souls into life everlasting. Amen. And let us now take our bread, remembering the body of Christ. And let us now dip our bread into juice, remembering the blood of Christ. Amen. And partake. And let us pray. Dear God, on this second Sunday in Advent, we are so grateful to you that we can be present to celebrate the Lord's Supper.
together. Although we are physically apart from one another, our spirits are united with the Christ. And for that, we are grateful. For the season that celebrates the time of preparation to again receive the Christ child, may you be with us, dear God, giving us strength and peace and hope for this season, for the challenges that may be before us with health, with the pandemic, with the desire for families to, to want to be together and they will be missed in celebrating Christmas together and holidays yet. We know that you will always be present to give us strength and to guide us into ways that are healthy for our bodies and for our spirits and for our communities in which we live. So this day, dear God, look after us, bless us, and let us always remember that may these elements of the bread and the cup nourish our bodies and souls into life everlasting. Amen. this new day. 
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. more.